up in the Redonkulous, we got Manu Ginobili. And Ginobili was getting a little bit batty. Because if you ain't seen the video, Homeboy was playing in the game, Diamond Edition, doing the Ginobili thing, looking like Balky. Then all of a sudden, there's a bat on Halloween Day flying around. And Ginobili, with the precision of the tongue of a frog, whips out his hand, bit, bit slaps that bat right out the air. And then not only does he knock it down, but then he picks it up and walks it to the ref. And then... It has him do away with it. Then he has to go get a rabies shot. But Balky, for the precision, for the precision of hitting that bat out there, that's 100% ridiculous. Uh, Next up, we have uh, the great poet Iverson. Mm. I have no problem with yes. my hamstring. I had a problem with my butt from sitting on that bench for so long. Oh. That was the only thing I have a problem with. Mm. What the hell are you talking about? Come on, man. 18 minutes. This is your first game. 18 minutes of the season. You can't keep your damn mouth shut already. Are you some sort of 13-year-old child? Are you Stephon Marbury reincarnated? I don't know. But you can't complain 18 minutes of the season with a brand new team. Brother, that is just... Redonkulous. Uh -huh. Next up, we got the Saints defense. And here's a little stat about the Saints defense. They are the NFL's highest scoring defense. But a little tidbit about, um, well, let's just compare. The Saints defense has scored more touchdowns than the Cleveland Browns offense. I did not misspeak. That's correct. The Hurricane Andrew of mismanagement of football, also known as Eric Mangina, compared, compared compiled, whatever, consolidated with the mismanagement of George Kokinas, the coolest name in all the sports, have averaged to score more touch, less touchdowns on offense than the Saints have managed to score on defense. That's just pathetic. And on top of being pathetic, son, that's 100% ridiculous. Uh, Next up, we have Ricky Stanzi out in Iowa. And you know what he did? Threw five picks to Indiana. Yes. Indy freaking Anna. They're terrible. They're downright terrible. And they almost took the Hawkeyes. But do you know why they didn't? Because Ricky Stanzi, the same guy who threw five picks, turns around and throws a pair of TDs. He leads Indiana with a great comeback. On the legs, a little bit of Brandon Wager. They were relying on just a brand new halfback, a third one of the season. I don't know where they keep creating these guys out in the Iowa cornfields, but somehow they're genetically modifying their halfbacks. But Ricky Stanzi's out there doing the leadership thing, rebounding after a terrible, terrible, terrible start. Throws a 92-yard touchdown pass, pass to McNutt, which is a great freshman wide receiver name. Uh, what else can you say about a guy who goes from the worst of the worst to the heroics of keeping his team undefeated? Oh, I know what you can say. Redonkulous! Next up, the Lake, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. And if you haven't seen that championship rings, all I have to say is, Pinky Ring got the bling at all times. The things are off the chain. If you, They are... Crusted in diamonds, adorned with platinum, and on the side, on the side, they got the image of each player's face crusted out in jewels and shadows, looking bling tastic, bling ballicious, bling blingish, bling somethingish. Just take a look at the picture. I mean, look at this ring. It's deliciously delectable. If it was food, I definitely eat it. If I was a thug, I put it in my teeth. But since I'm not, I just have one thing to say about it. Ridiculous. Uh, Next up, we have Dirk Nowitzki, who might as well have been Dirk Diggler the way he was doing the Jazz's defense come the fourth quarter. Ooh. But he dropped 29 in the fourth. That's just one quarter. That's a fourth of a game for you non-map types. He came in, led his team up from a 15 from a 15 point deficit, brought him back on his own volition. Driving to the hoop against Memento Core. Driving to the hoop against Carlos All-Star sort of Duke Loser Boozer. And against Andre Kirilenko, AK-47, the blocks machine, the Russian defender. He was all up in there. He's driving in the hoop. He's pushing guys off. He's hitting three-pointers, and he's knocking down 14 and 14 from the free throw line. It helps when you get some charity, don't it? But you only get charity when you play hard, and you drop 29 in the fourth, and baby, you get the title of Redonkulous! Uh -huh. for 69. Next up, we got Delonte West. And homeboy must have thought he was in the Grand Theft Auto video game. Because this fool's on his motorcycle, motorcycle, his keywords motorcycle, riding around in Prince George County, which is pretty swanky in Maryland. And when he gets pulled over, homeboy has two semi automatic pistols, and a shotgun, and a Bowie knife. Delonte, where the hell are you going? I haven't seen anything this absurd since Maurice Claret got busted with the flak jacket in the parking arsenal. What makes it even worse is your crazy butt was on a motorcycle. So you really just like 
Maybe you had on a long trench coat with like the, the vest with the two things, like you're on the replacement killers or some John Woo or Michael Webb Bay film where you have 30 bullets in a clip and a shotgun attached to your back like a backpack. Dude, you are crazy. You're depressed. You run around on motorcycles with guns. I, I can't even talk. Just 100% ridiculous. Uh, Next up, we have the Colbert Report. Doing some sports. The Colbert of Sports, they come out and they managed to sponsor a U.S. speed skating team. That's not bad. It's a very patriotic move for the patriotic boy, Stephen Colbert. And it's real cool they did this. They already had lost their sponsor. He comes in and sweeps in and he throws in the money to help them out. Wait, no he doesn't. He asks the fans to donate. Although this isn't the first time they did this. They did this for some service materials earlier for some military people. That was cool. I gotta get behind this. I'm, I, I'm all in all in for support of more Olympic teams and for definitely for the U.S. of freaking A because it's a party in the USA when Stephen Colbert's around he's donating money he's saving U.S. sports and you know what that is Mr. Colbert Redonkulous uh -huh. Next up we got Syracuse and last night the proud boys of Syracuse the 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 protectors of the carrier domes the Bayheim boys got beat by um hmm uh Duke, no. Kentucky, no. Uh, Kansas, no. Lemoyne, ding, ding, ding. Yes, Lemoyne. If you haven't heard of him, neither have I. They said Lemoyne. I was like, what? LeSabre? Is this a Buick car? I mean, these dudes never heard of, but apparently they are from Syracuse, New York. They're about mm, two and a half miles up the road. But they came into the Carrier Dome and told Beheim that he's fake, that his team is fake. They've been lying. And that's why Beheim's nose is so big, because he's like Pinocchio. And they this white. Syracuse, they are D2. Lemoyne is D2. Nobody's even heard of Lemoyne. And you managed to lose them. Is this an indication of Lemoyne's greatness or Syracuse's ineptness? Ineptitudinous. Whatever you want to call it. Whatever it is, it's 100%. Really? Dolphins. Those mighty mighty dolphins up in the morning. Yes. Alright, next up we have Brandon Spice. Who was putting the spice? He's uh -huh. Fingers up in some Georgia player's eye. I love me some Brandon Spikes when it comes to the football side. I'm not so sure about the person side, Brandon. Uh, what, what are you thinking? You're, you're winning. You're dominating. I, I get that you hate Georgia. That's cool with me. You can hate Georgia all you want. But you can't run around sticking your fingers in someone's eye mask like you're trying to pull the eye out and eat it for Halloween. Like it's some sort of candy hidden in there. Like a buried treasure. What are you... It's... it's ah, I can't even think of words for this. I can think of one word. Ridiculous. Next up, we have the wackos from PETA. PETA. I mean, you wonder why nobody takes you seriously? These fools have compared Manu Ginobili to Michael Vick for the way he accosted the bat in San Antonio. For the way he accosted the bat. Okay, this is a rabbit flying rodent. A, 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 a rat with wings. It's disgusting. How about I go to the PETA people's house and release a thousand bats into their home? See, if they don't kill not damn one of them, they'll kill every single one of them. But the fact that these nut jobs, these wackos, these lovers of all things animals have come out and compared the great Manu Ginobili, aka Balky from Perkins Strangers, to Michael Vick, dog killer. Ridiculous! Uh, and that's it for the Thursday Night Sports Party. We'd like to thank y'all for tuning in. Remember, you can check us out at www.thursdaynightsportsparty.com. You can also check us out at www.atltonight.com. And until next week, you stay classy, Atlanta. <laughs> I make music, I make movies, I need Tyler Perry's cell.